everyone and welcome back to the Black Tech Fest. This panel is about the power of allyship. My name is Yasmin Abdel Majid and I'm so excited to bring to you four fantastic guests who will be discussing this topic with for the next sort of 30, 35 minutes and then hopefully also answer some of your questions. So if you hear things along the way that you'd like to ask questions about, please pop it in the chat. So with us today, we have Maria Raga, the CEO of Depop. We have Andy Lawson, SVP EMEA Zendesk. We have David Bernard, the head of marketing at Box. And we have Elka Kaskins, the director of executive programs at Workplace Facebook. Thank you all so much for being with us today. So allyship is a term that's thrown around a lot. Um, and the four of you have very bravely stood up today to, to have a little bit of a conversation about how how you've been on that journey. And so I guess the, the, the first question I have for you is, what has the journey of allyship looked like for you? Has it always been something that you knew about and that you were active in, or was it something that you came to later in life? I'm really, really curious. Maria, I'm gonna start with you. What's that journey look like? Well, first of all, thanks for having me. Um, I guess, yeah, my journey has been, as a, as a female leader, I, I was familiar with the concept uh, of allyship. I had my allies. I, I was an ally. I am an ally myself to other um, women in business. Um, but being a deep op, I became more aware of other areas that I could be an ally. So from race, from um, uh, size inclusivity, disability, uh, LGBTQ+. Plus. So yeah, things that are actually at the forefront of our mission as a business. But then after um, the BLM protests in June, I came to the realization that I was not um, as, as, as informed about the challenges that the black community was facing. And that forced me to really seek greater awareness and, uh, and become a an stronger ally uh, for the black community, both internally and externally. I'm gonna take this moment to dig in a little. What, what, I mean, what was that like for you? Was there a moment where you were like, oh gosh, I, I don't really understand and I'm going to speak to someone or read books? Like how did, how did that play out for you? Well, there was um, in the, in a uh, deep of there was obviously, um, we had uh, a lot of discussions. We, we, we thought a lot about, about what happened. And I spoke a lot, a lot with our own employees, our black employees. And I was like, gosh, like these are things that I I should have been told of, like things that I'm like, um, it's 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 crazy that I'm not fully aware of this. And so and so yeah, then I actually also realized that it's not just a professional journey. I think it's all it's it's, it's definitely a personal journey. And it, it it was it was so strong for me that um, an example of this that happened quite recently. I actually decided to move my kids from from the school that they are in uh, into a uh, in school that ha that it's a lot more diverse uh, because I also want them to to understand the value of diversity, equity, and inclusivity. Mm, thank you for sharing that and and for sharing how that's impacted you personally as well, David. I'm going to come to you. What's that journey been like for you? I think for me, it's um, something that it's, I, it's something I've kind of always been aware of. Um, I grew up uh, in Bradford uh, that has its own um, issues with racism, that's for sure, um, especially uh, especially when I was growing up. So it was always something that I felt um, never sat comfortably with me at all. Um, I th and I think, but I think in terms of actively being aware of what allyship looks like in, in kind of a modern setting. Um, I, I think when I joined Box, I became far more aware of, of that whole concept. Uh, we have a range of employee resource groups at Box. Um, and when I joined Box in EMEA, one of the things that I was fortunate enough to do was to actually become chair of our, what we call our Thrive group, which coordinates all of our, our, of our employee resource groups, including one of them is what we call Mosaic. Um, Box is like a lot of SaaS, California and SaaS companies. We, you know, we have a wide range of, of uh, groups. Um, so we have Box Women's Network, we have Pride at Box, we have uh, Young Persons Network. And, um, and we actually founded a group called Mosaic in the UK because we felt like the issues, we have a black employee network in the US, but we felt like, um, you know, the employees in EMEA felt like that the issues that we've 
that we deal with in Amira are slightly different. Um, and of course, the, the, um, the diversity across, um, across box in Europe is slightly different to, 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 the, to, the, mix, to the mix in the US. And um, so we were already kind of well on that journey before uh, before everything that kind of has unfortunately happened across across the summer. Um, we've and we and it's you know I think it, it's hugely important um, that that everybody educates themselves and, and really takes active steps to educate themselves. And so that's really you know uh, we've intensified that journey. We had um, a wonderful. Uh, a guy Elijah Lawal come in to speak to us. who wrote the clapback, um, and uh, and uh, he's, he's he's a friend of, uh, of one of my colleagues, and so we were fortunate enough to have him come to talk to us. And I think for a lot of people, this was prior to the whole George Floyd thing. This was a real challenge for a lot of people because a lot of things that they hadn't considered as even they maybe not even thought of it in terms of stereotyping. All of a sudden, they became very very aware of those things. I, I was exactly the same, you know, there were things, you know, I would consider myself, I suppose, to be relatively uh, aware, um, given kind of where I've come from, but similarly for me, there was a lot, you know, there were things that I had no idea that, that they would be offensive, and yet, really, you know, when you see it from, the, from, the, from somebody else's perspective, you think, wow, um, you know, I, people, you know, you just have to be so much more mindful of, of other people's feelings and how they might interpret things that you may consider to be relatively benign. Um, so it's been a real journey for all of us in box. And um, I think it's done us all a huge amount of good, um, despite uh, at times the fact that it has been quite stressful for, uh, for some of the members of the team. Mm, thank you for sharing that. And it's interesting to hear that um, Elijah, who I know through the Black Writers Guild, actually, um, and his book is fantastic. Um, it's interesting that that talk, having come before the murder of George Floyd, kind of set the scene in a way that you may not have expected. Um, Andy, I'm going to come to you now. Um, what's it been like for you? Again, thank you very much for inviting us along today. And uh, Maria, my daughter's a massive fan. She thinks you're super cool. So, so I've got some credibility points tonight. So. Hey, for me, it's been quite a long journey. Um, as you can tell my accent, uh, I'm not from London, although I've lived here for 15, 16 years, but I come from Glasgow and Glasgow has a divide, right? It's got a religious divide. So growing, growing up in Glasgow, you know, you're always, which side of the fence are you on? And, and for me, it's it really it stuck with me because I, I didn't really care about it, right? I don't care. And, but you could see then, oh, you, you know, the sort of persecution of different minorities and things like that. And that really stuck with me. And, you know, as I've gone and involved my career, I've, I've been very lucky to work for a couple of superb companies where uh, this is right at front and center. And I learned a lot uh, working at a previous company with somebody called Tony Profit. And, you know, really learned a lot about allyship there and getting involved. And I tend to, you know, when there's an issue, you know, because I'm prepared to listen to, to people and help people, um, I get involved. So I got heavily involved with our LGBTQ plus community. I got heavily involved in, 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 in how do we help, you know, fix some of the problems we have in the tech industry regarding gender and ethnicity, et cetera. So I've been involved in that for a long, long period of time. And, and it was recently we were we were doing some stuff with our colleagues in the States and it was all around what was going on there and the unrest. And we, we brought that back to Europe and we, we had what we called an empathy circle, which was just literally an hour, an hour and a half, two hours of, of people sharing their stories. And again, you know, like David, we have an organization a resource group called uh, Mosaic. And, and for me, it was really just eye opening to, to hear people's stories, and, and some of the sad things that continue to go on outside and inside organizations. And so for me, it was really important that, you know, I given a position, you can really get behind things and really try and help some people and, and try and change it. And for me, it's, I'd like to, how do we change the tech industry to, to be better, get more people involved and become more diverse? And, and that's important. 
Mm, thanks, Andy. I think what's interesting in, in, in all of your stories is that there's some experience that you have where you've seen, you know, some discrimination, whether it's where you grew up or you know, you coming up in the industry. So there's there's that point. Elka, has that I mean, what's your journey been like? How what's your entry into the idea of allyship and how's that been for you? Yeah, of course. No, first of all, thank you so much for having us. And it's, it's great to hear the other stories from the other panelists. Um, I, think, I think to some extent my story is, 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 is a little bit different. Uh, to be very honest with you, I'm, I'm, I'm from the Netherlands. You might be able to tell from my accent, I'm not from the UK, even though I live here now. And diversity was around me the way I grew up and what I was exposed to. But I, I truly wasn't aware of, I guess, the importance of diversity in, in a professional setting. I obviously understand now that like diversity isn't just a soundbite. It is 100% critical to the success of any company. Teams must really understand and reflect a broad range of experiences, gender, et cetera, et cetera. But when I started my career, I was not aware of that. I really, really wasn't. I actually had a really eye-opening moment. And for me, that was sort of the moment when I thought, oh, wait, whoa, what's going on? Is um, I, was, I, I started my career off at Skype which some of you might remember, some of you don't, a uh, long time ago, so almost 15, 17 years ago, I went to CES, which is a consumer electronics show. It's one of the largest consumer electronics shows, hardware shows that happen in the world every year in January. So I am there, junior marketing managers, and I find myself in a meeting with 20 something men. And I'm like, well, where are all the women? like eye-opening, like what, sorry, what's going on? I was working in a relatively diverse team, had a lot of females around me, but all of a sudden I was like, huh. And then I walked on the show floor and there are all these like booth babes, as they call it, half-naked women dancing in front of TVs. And I, I remember being gobsmacked, like, excuse me, what is going on? And for me, that moment was very eye-opening. It was truly the first and I thought, hey, something's wrong, this isn't right. Um, and I think, as, as David just mentioned as well, ongoing education is important. And to be very frank, like I have been, the more I got within my career as well, because the impact I was able to have has, has been much greater. Um, so I'm very active in our women at community at Facebook. Um, but in addition to that, also outside of my, my day job, I am part of investment collective. Um, when you look at female founders of companies, the, the majority of capital still invested right now is actually in, in, in male founded companies. And as much as important as gender diversity is, racial diversity is equally as important as well. So I don't know, the, the, the more I'm learning and listening, the more inequalities and lack of diversity I see, the more I want to do. It's just like this, this sort of cycle. But for me, that was a very pivotal moment. Um, being mm. in a conference with hundreds of thousands of men and like no women. I was like, whoa. So anyway, that was my, my, my eye-opening moments up until then. Um, yeah. Then Thank I was you for sharing. Yeah. Well, no, I think, <laughs> thanks for sharing. Cause you're right. Cause like a lot of times we do need like a penny dropping moment to be like, oh, the way that I saw the world isn't, or the way that I imagined the world to be is not the way that it is. Um, and, and there's a gap now and I need to somehow bridge that. Now, the thing about allyship is that a lot of people can find it a little scary, right? Because you're coming into a space that may not be your own, that may be unfamiliar, that you're a bit tentative about. I mean, yes, I'm a black Muslim woman, but you know, I am an ally to queer communities. I'm an ally to dis people with disabilities and so on and so on. There are communities that I'm not a part of. And, I know that I'm like, oh, I don't know the rules and the norms in these spaces. How have you navigated that fear um, and that uncertainty in being an ally to communities that you may not be a part of? David, you are nodding, so I'm going to come to you. Yeah, I, I, it's something that I think um, it certainly can be quite intimidating when you when you when you kind of first. It, it's it, it's almost easier to be an unconscious ally than a conscious ally, I think. So if I think like if I think back over the last uh, five to ten years, I've had various points in my career where I've definitely shown allyship in decisions I've made, in things that I've pushed for, without actually being aware of 
allyship, which is kind of something as a concept that has really kind of come much more to the forefront over the past few years, I think. Um, but I think I definitely feel that when you are become a conscious ally, I suppose, and you start um, getting involved um, with uh, different groups, uh, it, it, certainly initially it can feel a little intimidating and you, you can, you know, you tend to, I tend to be quite cautious in what I say initially and try and listen first and just kind of get a feel for actually what, are, you know, what are the issues? What are the things that are, that are, that are on, on people's minds? What, where, and, and try and find a place that you can help from um, rather than kind of going in and assuming that, you know, well, that, that you know answers. You, I think you can, you, it's very easy to make presumptions um, so I think it is intimidating, but it's almost healthy intimidation in a way because it makes you actually mindful and, and open, hopefully open and willing to listen and learn. Mm. Andy, I also saw you nodding. Do you want to add anything? Yeah, no, I think it was great uh, what David was saying there. Um, a couple of key things for me is I'm just, I'm not scared to admit I don't know everything. Okay. Dead simple. Uh, and I really believe, you know, to echo David's point about the value of listening and really active listening, okay? And if you want to be an ally, you've got to just go and listen and don't try and change it, listen. And one of the things I'm wrestling with right now and, and, and talk about it is the, is the privilege, looking through different lenses. And that's something I'm, 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 I'm genuinely struggling how to, to come to terms with that and things like that because, you know, how do you look at people's lives and how do you help people through this lens and different lenses. So uh, for me, it's something I'm, I'm, I'm really looking into working with some people to try and really understand it more so that you can actually be really more authentic about it. Mm, can I ask if, if, if it's okay, what, what's the bit that's, that's difficult and how are you finding your way through it around privilege? Um, I, I think because we live in the world we live in, right? And certain aspects of it and people have different types of lives and things like that. And, you know, I'm, Lucky I work for a big high-tech, um, you know, software company. And, you know, so putting yourself in somebody else's position is, is quite difficult sometimes. And I think that's it. And I think you hear people say comments and, and my view is, you know, I got a, a little bit of argument over the weekend about it because I said, well, you're talking for a position of privilege, right? You're not, you're not putting yourself in that person's shoes and understanding what it's really like. And I think that sort of fuels the debate a little bit. And, I, and I, I need to, you know, keep drilling into that because I think it's something that people form opinions really quickly and really. Yeah, that, yeah, that kind of hits nail on the head. Elka, I saw you nodding a bit as well. Did you want to add something to that? No, I, like, I, I, I agree with everything that was said. I think what re relates strongly with me is I, I, I cannot, I don't know what it is to be black or to be a black Muslim woman. I, I, I can't relate to your experience because I am not. So listening to your stories and trying to do my best to understand your perspective and where I'm coming from is the best thing I can do as an ally. But I think what's also really important and Annie just said that as well is recognizing that it is difficult to have certain conversations and that it makes people, especially of those that are in more privileged positions uncomfortable in some ways as well but being open about that like hey i don't know this is hard what what do how do you want me to behave in some ways um is also a great first step of just recognizing that some of these conversations are difficult and i see people tiptoeing i see them I, they're doing their best they really really try but they actually start a conversation with like no offense but the moment you start a chat with that, already somebody is going to assume that you're going to offend them. So it, it is trying to make allies be real allies by being open and transparent that having the conversations can be difficult and that we have to figure it out. And it's only collectively that we can actually make a difference. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you. Maria, I'm going to come to you now. I've seen a lot of nodding and I know you've been taking notes. <laughs> <laughs> No, I was just, just thinking about what has been said. I mean, I couldn't agree more. Um, I, I guess the one thing that I could add to what has been said is the fact that I believe as, as business leaders and as people, we just need to get uh, more comfortable with being uncomfortable. 
because it's not an easy um, process. It's not an easy discussion. We should not have fear of getting it wrong because we are gonna get it wrong in the process, but it's all about continuous to get educated, to continually understand what it is to be something that we're not so that we can empathize, we can really lend our privilege. Um, so the listening part really, really resonates with me. And, but also like, I think there's something important around not just listening. Um, I think it's also important to act on things and take an active role here because otherwise things would, would not change. We would just be, oh yes, you know, we're listening, but what we really need to act on it and um, open up spaces for people to share their thoughts, but also like make sure that, you know, we bring those, those voices that we don't hear um, uh, on the table and, and yeah, elevating those thoughts that we think need to be elevated. So, so yeah, I think my, my point is more about like acting, but not being scared of acting or not being scared of feeling uncomfortable. And that's a perfect segue to the next question that I was going to ask all of you. But before I do that, I'm going to just, if you're watching and you have questions, please throw them in the chat because we'll be taking a few in just a moment. But Maria, you make this point about sort of taking it from like passive listening or even active listening to then what's the next step? What is action? And I'm curious about how you've taken the idea of allyship and applied it in your workplaces? How have you, uh, you know, allowed it to impact the company culture? How, you know, what does that look like? And I mean, Miria, CEO of Depop, how's that been for you and Depop? Yeah, so like I said earlier, it's like a never ending uh, journey of continuously learning and, and, and being informed and educated. Um, now internally at Depop, we've um, obviously have our d agenda for which I am completely, you know, fully accountable for, um, but we also started to embed um, certain values that are super important for Depop from sustainability to equity um, in our mission statement. So we are actually redefining those at the moment. And then um, externally, um, similar to what I said earlier, I think as, as, as Depop is becoming bigger and, and, and more influential, especially, especially in, a, in, a, um, in an age group. Um, I think it is important that we take, we, we use our voice to, 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 to drive positive change. And so some of the campaigns that you might see in the future, uh, you've seen already are, are basically towards that. Um, and then, yeah, we've got specific um, areas or, or, or uh, focus. For instance, we introduce uh, targets of representation, um, specifically for Black employees, uh, all the way from entry level up until the board, uh, which again, I'm fully accountable for. Um, and then, um, but I think also, I don't know how it would be for, for, for other businesses, but for Depop, our community is it always comes first and, first. and so we're also driving uh, diversity in our community. And so um, we are launching specific programs for um, black owned businesses uh, to be promoted within the app, but also through our channels, our marketing channels. And we're looking into launching more programs uh, for help to help them uh, grow their businesses. Mm, some really strong actions there, which is fantastic to see. Now, you know, both, sorry, Depop's a customer facing, you know, your customers are consumers, and it might be different for SaaS um, or sort of B2B organizations. So I'm, I'm curious, it might be, it might not be, but David and Andy, how has it been like sort of bringing um, your allyship to the company? And what's that looked like for you? Andy, I'll start with you. Yeah, and it was great to hear. And I, and I think it's fantastic to hear a chief exec saying, I'm accountable for that. And I think that's uh, really powerful. And I think, you know, organizations, SaaS companies, yeah, you, you know, we're in the same, you know, we worry about our customers and I worry about our customers' customers. So it, it, it's, a, it's a loop. And I think, you know, for us, it, having a chief exec, our chief exec, Michael Sven, as well, is really important. So he's gone and done something about this. We brought in DEI, somebody who wakes up every morning and is focused on this across our organization. You know, and we're a fast growing company but also the commitment to educate our people and really support our employees through, you know, again, with the empathy circles and making sure if you're an ally, I've got a, a one rule about being an ally. If you talk about it, you got to show up, right? And I, I see a lot of people and, and particularly, yeah, we, we, we talk it, they get excited around pride, but nobody then shows up. And for me as an ally, as a believer, you've got to go and put yourself into those positions and do it. And 
And I think that's really important. So, but again, having the person at the top of the company championing this, it, it helps make that change and drives that change through the business. So. Mm, thank you, David. Yeah, I think um, at Box we're really lucky in that we're a very community driven organization anyway. Um, so, and, and we, we have a leader in, in Aaron Levy who's kind of never been backwards and coming forwards with his views when it comes to all kinds of issues around equality and social justice and so on and so forth, even when it makes him uh, potentially unpopular or, 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 a, or a target, he's, he's never been afraid to do that. So we're lucky in that it comes right from the top, but I agree um, with Andy on two points that, that really, for the first one is, You've got to show up you've got to be present and that's one of the one thing that that we've kind of consistently tried to get into our leaders as well um it's it, because i think it can, could, kind of leads me to my second point which is there is little point in doing this if, if you're you know and, and talking about allyship and so on and so forth unless you're prepared to tip to, to kind of translate it into some form of tangible action it's like what are you actually going to do and whether that's um, in your in within the company, um, for us it's about um, ensuring representation, much like 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 Maria. Um, so we have representation right up to sea level um, already at Box, which is which is fantastic and absolutely quite right and exactly as it should be. But it's also about ensuring that um, you're bringing through the next generation of talent, and that for me is a really really crucial thing. Diversity of the talent pipeline. Is, 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 is ultimately the way that this problem gets fixed, you know, within, within tech, because we bring the more, the more diverse voices we can bring in at all levels of an organization, ultimately it, it, it will drive better business results anyway, you know, which is the nice outcome off the back of it, because we'll have more diverse channels of thought, but that's actually, you know, that is the, one of the strongest ways in which we can all show allyship is not going to the kind of the standard, um, looking for the standard set of experiences, but thinking about actually people might not have, have had the ability to gain the experiences that you would put on paper. So what are the transferable skills potentially that you could look at? You know, um, what, are the, what are the talents, the passions potentially, if you think beyond the kind of the stereotypical um, marketing manager or whatever role it is you're recruiting for, you know, what, where can I go? to find a broader pipeline and, you, and, and challenging both yourself, but also your recruitment teams to be as, you know, really go, go really broad in pipelining. Um, I, th I think that that's, that's a really crucial thing. And then it also for me, it's like, how do you translate it into your personal life? You have to, and you, you know, and I think that for me has been an area this year, which has been a, a big journey with, um, uh, certainly where I live, uh, there is a lot of rural racism. There, there is the lack of, con the lack of um, consciousness about privilege is truly shocking at times. And so being willing to stand up and being willing to speak out, I think if you don't really believe it, if you're just doing it for lip service, then just don't do it. You know, just save everyone the time and, 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 and the bother and ultimately the disappointment and just don't, don't bother but be authentic about whatever it is you commit to. There's so many bits in everything that's being said that I want to sort of like click my fingers to, but we don't have that much time. Um, so thank you, David. Elka, I'm going to come to you because you're at Facebook and you're in, you know, uh, yeah, what's that? How are you bringing that to as such yeah. a, you know, a mammoth organization? Right, totally. And I was about to make a joke. I'm not Mark Zuckerberg or Cheryl Sandberg. Um, no, but I mean, diversity and inclusion, uh, we consider really that to be everybody's responsibility. We'll give her a couple of seconds. If she doesn't um, come back. Oh. We're holding herself accountable by reporting annually on a diversity report. Um, we have a diverse slate hiring approach. So it's incredibly, incredibly important, as was mentioned earlier as well, that like, top of the funnel, we get that diverse talent in. Um, so we have quotas in place to ensure and, and our process to ensure that that actually obviously happens. Um, we also really strongly, more specifically on the allyship 
in addition on diversity, obviously like mandatory training, making sure people understand their biases, um, training on having hard conversation, calling people out on that, just the awareness piece, like there's a lot going on there, but more specifically around we think of ally is an ally is a person who supports somebody else um, and works together proactively to 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 build inclusion within the workplace um, really to help build internal communities so from a performance per review perspective the what matters but the how truly matters as well um, which is a huge shift that i've seen over the last 10 years that i've actually been there not that it didn't matter before but right now like how you have contributed to in building internal community um, gets really, really recognized. So that also goes, I guess, to the point of like, how do you ensure that everybody is um, held accountable for allyship to some in some capacity is by having process in place like that. But we're definitely not, not where we want to be, um, but we're making small progress. I think since 2014, I think the majority of leaders internally um, female ones um, have been promoted and that number has increased. But we've also increased the number of black women at face by 25x since 2014, which is noticeable. Uh, black men by 10x. But it's progress, but we're still not there. At Facebook, we have a saying like we're only 1% done. And I think that's that is absolutely true when it comes to DNI as well. But the intent is there as well as the commitment, as was said earlier, um, at the executive level. Mm. Thank you. Okay, we've got loads of questions coming through, which is fantastic. Um, one of them, one of the, actually the first question that came through was how do you approach intersectionality as an ally, like um, the intersections of various sort of marginalizations? Um, the, this person sort of said there can sometimes be a tendency to be like, oh, you know, there is so much there are so many different groups, there are so many different challenges. How, how are you approaching that in your organizations or perhaps personally? Go, David. That, that's a really tough question. Um, I, th I think, uh, you know, I, I, I think above all else is about trying to just balance everybody's needs, right? And just trying to be mindful <laughs> of that 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 um, you know that you're you're seeking representation from uh, right across uh, right across the the entire spectrum of of um, of underrepresented groups. Um, I think it's true. It's it's extreme. It's an extremely complex issue, and I think as well. Um, certainly for European arms of tech organisations, it really depends how big the organisation is as well. And it, so, so sometimes there are limits, not because of your lack of willingness, but simply because of the lack of scale. Um, so, you know, maybe, you know, in a perfect world, you would ideally like to do more, but you simply don't have the roles. For example, when you're doing talent pipelining, you, you, you know, it's just your organization simply isn't big enough, but always trying going into any process, trying to be mindful of all of the different groups. Um, uh, underrepresented groups, I think is, that's kind of how I would approach it. I'm not sure if it's right or wrong, but. No, I don't think there's, this is not about right or wrong, but sort of how you're all doing it as allies in your different spaces. Maria, you had a look on your face. Did you want to add something? No, I, I, I was going to say that I actually uh, think it's a very, very good question. And it's something that we are really thinking deeply about um, because it has been raised and, I think it's also about educating uh, yourself about how to deal with this kind of situations. Um, so we're definitely in the journey, um, um, but yeah, it's, it's a mm. challenge. Yeah, definitely a challenge. Um, I'm gonna try to get to another question. How do you bring people in your organizations or teams into the conversation or take, to take part and bring them on board when they're not so inclined? Andy, I might start with you. Yeah, you know, and it's, uh, again, that's a tough one. I think uh, what you can't do is force people into this. People have to want to do this, right? And it's creating that platform. And, and it was interesting that just the previous question that was, as a tech industry, we were really good at pivoting, right? And I remember this conversation seven years ago about when we looked at gender and we, we pivoted over there. And that 
and, and again, we have to bring everybody, we can't let anybody fall behind. We have to bring everybody with us. And, and really, I, I tell you, some of the most powerful things is, is like those empathy circles. We're just going and listening. And I would say to anybody, go listen, right? You don't have to share a story, don't have to share your journey, et cetera, but go and listen and, uh, and see where it takes you. And getting people into that way, uh, I find it's much more beneficial and you get more adoption quicker. Once people start hearing these other stories and, and again, looking at it through a different lens, then it helps them get more involved and make it fun. One of the things that we've actually done at Box is through the through our Thrive group, um, where we bring all of our, of our ERGs, our employee resource groups together, is we actually have the different groups actively supporting each other. I mean, we're a relatively small organization in Europe right now, um, growing growing pretty quickly, but still probably only 100, 180 people across the org. Um, so without that support from one group to another, actually, you kind of, uh, you, 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 we, we would struggle to put on a lot of the things that we put on. Um, so one of the things that we saw in the, in the um, as a, after the George Floyd um, murder was uh, that actually our pride group um, donated all of their funds for pride because of course they couldn't do a physical pride this year to um, black educational uh, charities because they felt like that, that was the right thing to do. So I think encouraging, if you, if you have a strong community in your organization, then ultimately people look after each other and, and, and maybe some of this stuff kind of takes care of itself to some degree through, through that community. Mm, I love that. What a great example. Alka, I'm going to bring you in on this one. How have you brought people onto the train as it were, if they're not so inclined? Yeah, good, good, great question. And apologies that my internet's still not stable. My, my video might go in hard again. Um, I, I think Andy made, made one of the, the, the most valuable points. Like it, it is about awareness and education. Like I fundamentally believe that the majority of people are not evil on the inside and do not care intentionally. It is just, they're not aware. So it, it's very much about bringing awareness around either the privilege that someone has or the biases that someone has to the forefront to make people realize that that change is required and that they play a role within that. So at Facebook, we are super, super, obviously um, yeah, active and open about that. Um, we have days dedicate, dedicated to, to learning and educating. Um, and hopefully it, it triggers somebody to realize, oh shit, actually, you know what, I am really privileged and what, is it, what, what role am I playing to change things? So I think it fundamentally comes down to exposing people to either what they are or what they aren't and or the challenges that what they are not uh, actually are being experienced by others. Um, and then also really, how do you put that? Um, give people examples of how to behave better in some ways as well. Like I think from a lot of like surveys that I've read around allyship is people don't like to be recognized for being an ally and they like to see modeled behavior. So I think from a leadership perspective as well, like being openly an ally, so not behind closed door, but very actively talking about it, setting the right example, and also recognizing when people are allies and are making a difference, it it has a um, in uh, yeah it has a, it will have a ripple effect ultimately. But it all comes down to awareness. People aren't evil in their core, or the majority of people at least. Yeah. Oh. Amazing. We have essentially run out of time, but this has been fantastic. I feel like it's been a packed 40 minutes. Thank you all for sharing your experiences. I heard active listening. I heard you've got to show up. I heard that it might be uncomfortable, but just admitting that you don't know is actually perfectly fine. Um, and I also heard that awareness is a big part of it. And what I suppose as somebody who isn't in the same situation as all of you, perhaps my contribution to that will be, you're probably somebody that people will listen to in a way that they might not listen to me. And that is important to recognize. That power is something, it's a, it's a power that you have that I don't. And so you might become aware of something and you can pass that message on in a way 
that will create a ripple effect that is different to the one that I can create. So take that responsibility on seriously um, because we're all, we can't do it by ourselves, right? As, as David very rightly put it, you know, we are all, ultimately the strength is in our community. Um, so thank you all. Thank you, David, Andy, Maria, Elka. Thank you to the Black Tech Fest and have a fantastic evening, folks. Good luck Thanks out there. Thank Thanks for having Bye. us. Bye. Thank you. Hi everyone, my name is Nathan Medford and I'm a Senior Strategic Designer at BCG Platinum. We're happy to partner with Colour in Tech to launch our Enterprise Award as part of Black Tech Fest 2020. Do you have an idea for a digital product or service that empowers the BAME community? It could be something simple like a new way to book a quarantine shape-up, a way to discover all of the local black-owned businesses in your area, or even something as adventurous and large as a new social network for people to connect and exchange experiences online in a safe and trusted way, free from judgment and ridicule. What we'd like you to do is submit a short pitch deck that explains what your idea is, who your target audience is, and how your product or service enables them to do something that they couldn't do before. Now, I know that sounds like a lot, so we provided you with a handy pitch template that includes all of the information that we'd like to hear about your product or service. We've also included some links to some online resources for images, illustrations, icons, and other things that can help your presentation look as professional as possible. We're giving you four weeks to get your pitch decks back to us by the 12th of November. At that point, our team of expert judges We'll take a look at the concepts and pick the winning product or service. You can kind of think of them like the dragons, just with a little bit more melanin, a few less wrinkles, and a hell of a lot less money. The winner will receive ongoing help, advice, and support from our tech experts to help you elevate your idea to the next level. We're really excited to see what you come up with. Good luck.